Claire moved to New York from a small town in Iowa, where she was born and raised on one of the very many farms. The woman didn't have a father, and her mother had to work very hard her entire life, which is why she was often sick and needed a lot of money for her treatment. Claire thought long and hard before making the fateful decision. But as she looked at her peers, she realized that apart from hard farm work, she had nothing to hope for in her small hometown. Meanwhile, Claire had a degree in economics, which is always a source of pride for her mother. Unfortunately, the girl had no work experience in that field, and therefore, local employers flatly refused to hire the recent graduate. Don't be upset, dear. You'll definitely find a good job. Just be patient, it'll happen, Catherine said trying to calm her daughter down as she realized that New York was unlikely to welcome Claire with open arms. Mom, I'm an adult now. Most of my friends moved away and none of them regret it. New York is the city where dreams come true. There are great opportunities there, said Claire, who was desperate to find her place in life. Catherine only shook her head in response and quietly wished her daughter good luck. Knowing that Claire would certainly need some money to settle in, she put a small amount into her daughter's purse before seeing her off. It was her modest savings that she set aside for a rainy day. Take care of yourself, dear, and remember, I'm always waiting to get good news from you, Catherine said in parting before giving her daughter a long hug. Claire was very excited because she felt that she was finally starting a new life. She believed that New York would definitely justify all of her hopes. The metropolis stunned the small-town woman with its magnitude and frantic rhythm of life, which could be confusing to tourists and out-of-town people. First of all, Claire started looking for a job, but to her great chagrin, no one was in a hurry to hire someone fresh out of college. Getting rejected over and over again, the woman was getting more upset by the day and even starting to despair. Finally, Claire got lucky at one of the small banks located on the outskirts of the city. Having carefully studied the woman's diploma, the head of the HR handed it back to her and shook his head as if in doubt. Trying to compose herself, Claire bit her lip and was already getting up to leave, when suddenly, a handsome young man in an expensive business suit called out to her. Wait a minute, miss. Do you really want to work at our bank? The handsome man asked. He turned out to be the deputy director. Yes, sir. I really want to work for you. Claire answered readily and looked hopefully into the eyes of her potential boss. Mr. Johnson, I get it, but Miss Phillips has no work experience, and we're running a bank here after all. The head of the HR chimed in. Mr. Clark, isn't experience something Miss Phillips could acquire by working? Even if there are things she doesn't know yet, I'm sure we have enough highly qualified specialists at our bank who could help her out and teach her everything she needs to know. Andrew Johnson retorted. He immediately took a liking to the simple, small-town woman. Having heard the opinion of the higher management, Stephen Clark spread his hands and with an offended look, started getting all the documents in order to hire Claire to work in a loan department. Such a good job at a bank. How lucky am I? And they hired me immediately. No internship or probationary period. I'm so lucky. I have to tell my mom. She'll be so happy for me. Claire thought, unable to contain her smile. Unfortunately, the young woman didn't know that at that very moment, she was closely watched by the deputy director, Andrew Johnson, who stood up for the inexperienced woman for some unknown reason. If Claire had been more experienced and older, she would have probably gotten suspicious over such a biased attitude for a complete stranger. But at that time, the young woman was willing to agree to nearly any conditions to get a job at the bank. The first day at her new job was even better than Claire's most optimistic expectations. The woman was clearly on cloud nine. All the while, Andrew Johnson never left the new employee's side even for a moment, prompting and helping her with everything. Wow, the deputy director himself is training me. I guess I really got lucky, Claire thought, barely holding back a joyful smile. Soaring in the clouds and bright dreams of a quick rise up the career ladder, the woman got careless and inattentive, which was something the bank employees couldn't afford to be. The first month at the new job seemed to fly by. During this time, she became very friendly with the deputy director, Andrew Johnson. Moreover, the boss even invited Claire out to dinner a couple of times, thus giving her a reason to think about the possible development of a close relationship. Unfortunately, the reality turned out to be very different from what the small town woman had dreamed up in her head. 
One day, a nondescript man came to the loans department with a folder of documents in his hands. Glancing around the room, he immediately chose Claire, who was tapping away on the keyboard of her work computer. Good afternoon, ma'am. I'd like to take out a loan at this bank, the stranger said, sitting down on a chair. What's the amount you'd like to get, sir? Claire asked readily, looking at the copies of the documents provided by the client. The stranger hesitated for a moment and then said, I need two or three million, ma'am. That's when Claire suddenly started feeling anxious, that kind of anxiety people get when they subconsciously sense the danger. The woman really didn't like the documents provided by the client. The more Claire looked at them, the more she doubted their authenticity. And when the woman was about to reject the man's application, Andrew Johnson came into the office and immediately took interest in this matter. Is something wrong, Claire? What's bothering you, my dear? I can see even from here that the papers are in order. Hurry up, we're having dinner at the restaurant today, remember? So, I suggest you don't spend too much time approving this loan, Andrew Johnson said, emphasizing on approving. Claire took the boss's words as clear instructions for her to follow, trusting Andrew Johnson in everything. The woman immediately approved the loan and escorted the client to the cashier. Meanwhile, the candlelit dinner was already waiting for her at one of the best restaurants in New York. It seemed to Claire that she was living the dream and she wished for it to never end. Unfortunately, the dream turned into a nightmare way sooner than she could have ever expected. The very next day, Claire was called into the office of the head of the bank security. Being at a loss as to what could be the reason behind it, the woman came into the office without worrying too much about it. The director of the bank and several guards were already waiting for her there. Miss Phillips, do you know that yesterday you approved a loan for a gentleman who provided fake documents? How do you explain it? Did you know about it? Are you in on it? Claire's lips started to tremble and tears immediately welled up in her eyes. I, I don't know how it happened, sir. And Mr. Johnson, he, he told me, he said. The woman tried to explain, stammering on every word. Don't try to pull Mr. Johnson into this. You and you alone made this awful mistake. You shouldn't go blaming someone else for it. Basically, if the money isn't found in the next two days, you'll be responsible for paying the bank back in the full amount, the director said, making it clear that this conversation was over. Claire felt as if it was a bad dream, so she left the director's office and went to see Andrew Johnson, barely managing to hold it together. But to the woman's great disappointment, the deputy director was very cold and distant, as if he hadn't given her an almost direct order to approve the loan yesterday. And when Claire asked the deputy director about it directly, his answer brought her to tears. It's your fault, Miss Phillips. I'm sorry, but I can't help you, said Andrew Johnson sharply, turning to an official tone. Only now did Claire realize the full scale of the problem she was facing. Her entire life wouldn't be enough to pay the bank back, the amount of three million with interest. And the woman really didn't want to work at the bank for free until the end of her days. Claire's life and promising career, which had started off so well, was collapsing right before her eyes. The amount of debt that she was saddled with put so much pressure on Claire that she couldn't collect her thoughts and relax even for a second. The woman walked down the street. Tears were streaming down her face. Maybe I should just end it all. What kind of life can I have now? Maybe I should just go to the bridge and be done with it. Claire thought and turned towards the bridge. Approaching the railing, the woman looked down, feeling an inexplicable fear of the unknown, of what was awaiting her on the other side of life. She carefully held onto the railing as she swung one of her legs over it. The woman was about to throw her second leg over when a patrol car stopped next to her, screeching its brakes. A young police officer carefully stepped out of the car and said, Miss, trust me, you don't want to do this. There's no problem that can't be solved. There actually is, Claire answered with a sob. The woman had already made up her mind and was ready to jump. At that moment, the police officer made a desperate leap and managed to grab her arm at the very last moment. Then, disregarding the screams of the desperate woman, the police officer put her into the police car and locked the door. The officer's name was Ben Harris, and he had been patrolling the city streets for 10 years protecting the life and peace of the citizens. 
On their way to the woman's home, the law enforcement officer tried to find out the reason that pushed her to commit suicide. Claire only sobbed quietly at first, but then she decided to tell the officer everything exactly as it happened. You're right, that's a real problem, but it seems to me that it can be solved. I have a friend in the economic crimes unit. I think he'll be very interested in the information you shared. Ben said thoughtfully, dropping the woman off at her house. Hearing the officer's answer, Claire smiled, feeling cautiously optimistic. That's much better. Give me a week and I'll figure it out, okay? Just promise me not to try and jump off the bridge again. And don't get any other silly ideas. Ben said and winked encouragingly before leaving. Claire nodded her head readily, feeling a great deal of gratitude for this man. The woman was amazed to see Ben at her house five days later, even sooner than he'd promised. It was clear from the officer's face that he had found something very interesting. Ben smiled warmly at Claire, and then, after pausing for effect, he began his story. As it turned out, Deputy Director Andrew Johnson was the culprit of this story. Apparently, he had a gambling problem and owed huge amounts of money to many businessmen in the city. In order to pay off his debts and his creditors, the insidious man decided to pull off such a cunning plan. Unfortunately, he chose the naive, small-town Claire as his victim, charming her into trusting him. But now, thanks to Ben Harris, Mr. Johnson won't be hearing the sounds of the casino hall for a long time. After the incident with the scam, Claire Phillips quit her job at that ill-fated bank and went to work at a safer place, which Ben suggested. After getting through all of this together, the young people started dating and even thinking about marriage, which Claire had dreamed of since she was a little girl. But most importantly, the woman is sure that Ben loves her and will never use her.